This is a 2022 Hyundai Tucson Hybrid, and it's a compact crossover, but it looks more interesting than that. So many compact crossovers are boring and they all look the same, but not this one. This has some style and a hybrid powertrain, and today I'm going to review it. Before I get started, be sure to check out Cars and Bids, which is my enthusiast car auction website for cool cars from the modern era, now with free listings. You can list your car for free and auction it on Cars and Bids. And we've had some great sales recently, including this Audi RS4 sedan, which sold for just under $48,000, this fantastic Mercedes G55 AMG, which brought over $65,000 with low mileage, and this Porsche Cayman GT4, which sold for just over $96,000, one of my all-time favorite sports cars. If you're looking to buy or sell a cool enthusiast car from the modern era, check out Cars and Bids with daily auctions and great selection at carsandbids.com. So let's talk Tucson Hybrid. Under the hood is a hybrid four-cylinder that makes about 225 horsepower and around 260 pound-feet of torque. Those are pretty good numbers, but they're similar to rivals like the Honda CR-V Hybrid and the Toyota RAV4 Hybrid. Fuel economy is similar too. The Tucson Hybrid is rated at 37 miles per gallon in combined city and highway driving, the CR-V Hybrid is rated at 38, and the RAV4 Hybrid is rated at 40. Where the Tucson Hybrid really distinguishes itself is how it looks. The Honda CR-V, the Toyota RAV4, the Ford Escape, they all look pretty similar, pretty boring, nothing interesting or exciting there, but not this. This looks daring with sharp creases and edges that you wouldn't really expect to find on a compact crossover, and that makes it kind of interesting. So today I'm going to review the Tucson Hybrid and show you everything else. First, I'll take you on a little tour and show you a few of its quirks and features, then I'll get it out on the road and drive it, and then I'll give it a Doug score. All right, I'm going to start the quirks and features with probably the most distinctive aspect of the new Tucson, and that would be the way it looks, which is especially unusual on the side. You can see these creases going down the side, sort of jagged edges do not look like anything you've seen before on a standard compact crossover. In fact, they make this vehicle look more expensive because they're expensive to do. Most automakers just have simple, straight, flat doors because it's easier and cheaper, but Hyundai decided to go a little more aggressive and bolder here, and it certainly has a different look than every other little crossover. And on the side of this car, you have more than just these bold creases for extra character. You also have this silver panel that runs over the windows all the way down the side, and then kind of finishes at the end, getting wider with a few character lines. Again, it gives this car a more expensive look than what you'd expect from just a compact crossover. And up front, there's more boldness that distinguishes the Tucson from other little crossovers. You can see the grill is very large, quite aggressive, and very distinctive to this car. It's pretty clear what you're looking at when you see one of these come toward you, which you can't say about every compact crossover. Some of them are very anonymous from the front. Now, this car is even more distinctive from the front when it's running, because then the running lights go on. You can see them here, these LEDs arranged in sort of a V pattern flanking the front grill, and it looks even more distinctive and daring with those LEDs on, kind of as a complement to the front grill. And there's even more style on the side of the new Tucson that separates it from other compact crossovers. The wheels. You can see the wheel design also very distinctive, very unique to the Tucson. To me, a little overstyled with all these lines and shapes in the wheel, but it certainly does look more interesting and more visually exciting than a traditional, like, basic five-spoke wheel like so many others have. And then there's the rear end, which is also more distinctive and bolder than other compact crossovers. It's got a theme going here. You can see there's a light bar going across the rear and these lights that shoot down vertically in lines from the light bar, which is kind of a cool look. And they have these triangles integrated into the trim back here, which is certainly distinctive and interesting. This definitely looks more exciting from the back than any other little crossover. One other interesting kind of unusual design piece 
back here, the Hyundai logo is not on the tailgate itself. Instead, it's on this little panel at the base of the rear window where the rear wiper usually goes. But this vehicle does have a rear wiper. It's just hidden under the spoiler at the top of the rear window, and it comes down and wipes the rear window because you have the Hyundai logo taking up the normal place. Kind of odd. But you see all this exterior stuff, and you might be wondering why? Why has Hyundai decided to shake up the relatively tame world of the compact crossover with such a bold and distinctive vehicle? I think it looks good. Some people don't, but regardless, it's certainly different than the others. And I think the answer is because they've realized that this sells. Hyundai and Kia came out with the Telluride and the Palisade, which are pretty good mid-size SUVs, but they've sold exceptionally well because of their design. The Kia Telluride looks very bold and off-roady, and the Palisade also looks good, much more distinctive and interesting than your Toyota Highlander, Honda Pilot, Mazda CX-9. And Hyundai and Kia have taken that philosophy and now applied it to other vehicles. There was first the Kia Sorento, and now we're seeing it here on the Hyundai Tucson. A different look compared to its rivals, so people bored with the usual crop of compact crossovers can finally choose something unique and a little bit more special. Now, unfortunately, that uniqueness and specialness on the outside of this car doesn't quite translate to the interior quite as much, which has been a complaint that I have with Hyundai and Kia models. They've clearly gone to great lengths to make their cars cooler on the outside, but inside they're still fairly standard, as you can see. Now, with that said, there are a few cool touches in here, like over on the passenger side of the dashboard, this climate vent looks very long, but actually it's relatively small and it's just an interesting piece of style. And the line of that climate vent is carried on to the door panel to make it look like one unbroken piece, which is a nice touch you mainly see in luxury cars. Now, on the other side of that line, you can see it flows into the center control stack here, and it does the same over on the driver side, kind of creating two separate spaces for driver and passenger, which is sort of a distinctive and cool look. And when it comes to kind of cool things in this interior, another one is the gear selector. You can see here in the center buttons to go into gear, reverse, press at the top, drive, press at the bottom bottom park is over on the side, kind of a more interesting and exciting gear selector than other models. Now also in this interior, I love the gauge cluster screen, which is nice, very high resolution, again, kind of a luxury car feature, although more and more vehicles are starting to adopt it. Although I especially love the blind spot camera system in this car. You put on your turn signal and a little camera turns on on the side you're signaling to show you what's in your blind spot. This is tremendously useful when you're driving anywhere, but especially making lane changes on the highway to see what's behind you. It does a better job of showing that than mirrors, and I really love this system, and frankly, I wish more cars had it. But as much as I love the gauge cluster screen and, frankly, the center screen, I think they've maybe gone a little screen crazy in the Tucson. Not everything needs to be on a screen, like, for instance, volume buttons. You can see here, no knob to adjust volume. Instead, you have to tap the buttons up or down, which is annoying. You can hold down the button, but it's still not quite as easy as just twisting a knob like most cars have. Now you can also see below that climate controls are not integrated into the center screen, which most people consider to be a bonus. But the problem is that the controls themselves are touch controls. And so even though they're not part of the screen, they still don't have any actual feedback like a button or a dial would. So you kind of have to look down and it's not incredibly obvious where to push each time since everything feels the same with the climate controls. And next up we move on to the back seat in the new Tucson. And I gotta say, it's pretty roomy back here. Surprisingly so. I am a tall adult and I have good room. Knee room, leg room, head room. It's all pretty good. People are often asking me if they can use compact crossovers as a family car. RAV4, CRV, Mazda CX-5. And increasingly the answer is yes. These are getting larger and back and they're becoming more familyable. And this certainly is as well. I'm surprised how roomy it is back here. A couple cool features in the back too. For one, you have two separate USB ports, which is nice to see. And above that, you have two separate climate control vents, which you don't always get in compact crossovers for the rear passengers, and it's nice to have them here. No separate climate controls for the rear seats, but that's to be expected. The vents are frankly nice enough. And speaking of climate control, you also have rear heated seats back here. You tap this little button next to the power window and turn on your rear heated seat to warm your butt. 
And next up, we move on to the cargo area, which, like the back seat, is surprisingly large. Again, smaller crossovers seem to be growing and offering more space for passengers and stuff. And this is no exception. Good sized cargo area back here, even if you don't have the seats down. But if you do want to put the seats down, another nice benefit here is these little latches on the side of the cargo area. Pull it, and the seat falls down. This is a nice touch to see in a compact crossover. A lot of these, you have to go up to the seat itself and actually pull it down with a latch but here you can do it from the cargo area, which is nice. With that said, of course, you can't put the seat back up from back here. You gotta go up to the seat and push it back into place, but that's relatively easy. And finally, we move under the hood and you can see the hybrid four cylinder. <laughs> Nothing too crazy up here. 225 horsepower, about 260 pound-feet of torque, and like I mentioned, about 37 miles per gallon in combined city and highway driving. The Tucson Hybrid has a little bit more power than its rivals, but it's not exactly fast, zero to 60 in the mid seven second range. And fuel economy is a little bit lower than rivals. CRV's at 38, RAV4's at 40, like I mentioned. So the Tucson Hybrid doesn't really have a big advantage in terms of power performance or fuel economy compared to RAV4 and CRV, but, it looks better, or at least more distinctive, and that's a big selling point to a lot of people. Plus, it's not like it's lagging that far behind in performance and gas mileage. All right, driving the Tucson Hybrid. A uh, couple things about this car. For one, <laughs> This isn't that interesting to drive. I often, I don't usually review cars like this, like little compact crossovers, especially hybrid ones. It's not really in my wheelhouse. But I was especially interested in reviewing this because I've seen a few of these on the road and they really are unusual looking, interesting, kind of weird. And frankly, a lot of people are talking to me about this car. Have you seen the new Tucson? Have you seen how that looks? And I'm like, since when are people, car enthusiasts or just generally car questioning people, talking about a compact crossover. Like, how did this happen? And I think the style is a really, really, really big factor here. And it's kind of an interesting phenomenon. For years, Toyota and Honda have built compact crossovers that have been good, but frankly, rather dull and uninteresting, especially to look at. And I think Hyundai and Kia have come in and said, hey, we finally have achieved the level of the Japanese companies in terms of you know reliability and perception. Now we can attack them in, in style and making the cars look better. And, and that's a good idea. Now, as for the driving experience, like I said, it's fairly uninteresting in this vehicle. It just sort of, I mean, it accelerates like a normal crossover, zero to 60 in the mid sevens. It's good, uh, but not like insane or special or anything like that. This one has a sticker price in the mid $38,000 range. It's like 38.4, I think. Uh, and it's pretty well equipped. Honestly, it's a lot of car for 38.4. It blows me away that in today's world, you can get almost 40 miles per gallon, all wheel drive, leather, heated, cooled seats, heated steering wheel, these big screens, all these cameras, and have a relatively roomy back seat and a relatively roomy cargo area. It's like it jack of all trades if you're not that interested in like a fun performing car. And 38 grand sounds like a lot of money, but the average new car is like in the low 40s now. So this is cheaper than an average new car. And just the amount of stuff you get is really quite impressive. But it's not dramatically more or crazier or better than rivals. So I don't see that as this car's big advantage. To me, the real advantage here is the way that it looks. You know, the Honda CRV has looked very similar for a long time and it's dull. The CX-5 looks nice, but it's not like, wow, what is that? And this car kind of is. And I'm pretty impressed with the way that it looks, the way they've been able to design a relatively affordable compact crossover. And it still has all the other good crossover stuff in addition to a bolder look. And so that's the new Hyundai Tucson Hybrid. This car is not faster than its competitors or more powerful or more exciting or larger inside or more efficient. In fact, on paper, it just looks like another compact hybrid crossover. But when you see it in person, it looks different. It has some style, it's daring. And that's a big deal in the compact crossover world. It's very hard to find. And now it's time to give the the new Tucson Hybrid, a Doug score. And the Doug score is here, 48 out of 100, which places the Tucson Hybrid in good company against compact crossovers. Frankly, my take on the Tucson Hybrid is that it's not particularly fun to drive, but it's efficient, well-equipped, and attractive inside. But the real distinguishing feature is the exterior styling, which is opinion splitting, but also a breath of fresh air in the relatively boring world of the small SUV. 